Were they, uh, I mean, I know that these guys have answered these questions, um, but you, for our listeners, I mean, was there, were they ever tempted to move out of that uh, second pick? I don't think so. You know, there was uh, the, the two scenarios I heard were a couple teams looking to trade up, but they were both lower in the in the first round. I mean, lower meaning that they weren't in the top, say, ten or so. And you know, one of them had a player who was unhappy with his situation who wanted to uh, to be traded. Uh, you can think about that. There's two teams that were definitely in that situation with the Jets and, and Jacksonville. The team, the team name was never given to me, but that would be, you know, mm-hmm. would be one of those two maybe. And I think it was reported that Atlanta was the other team. So I don't think so. I don't know. They, you know, they. I think the other player they really, really valued in the draft was was Akuda. And if there wasn't a way that if you weren't going to get Chase Young, if you couldn't get Akuda too, I don't think they really wanted anything to do with it. Did you have any sense that <clears throat> some of these guys like Gibson or uh, what is it, Cakes? Is it Gandy, Gandy Golden? Gandy, Gandy Golden. Golden. Like any, were those guys that they targeted going in or they just felt like they were too good of value at that, at that spot? Probably a little of both. But, I mean, the, the sense I got, they were sort of running through things. Because I asked these guys – the other day, and we were talking after the draft. Did did you ever have a disagreement? Because that is, you know, neither of them has have run a, a front office before, and the idea was that everything's going to be done by a consensus. And then I guess you absolutely desperately needed someone to quote unquote break the consensus, you know, break a, a debate. That that would be Dan Snyder who would do it. And I was like, well, did you ever disagree on a player through this? And it sounds like that their board was so strong in terms of where they thought guys were going to go that the players that at that pick, when the little group of players came up, maybe five guys they were looking at, there was always the obvious choice to them. It's the way that they sort of explained it. So I, I guess and to answer your question, I think those were guys they expected to be in those spots and then they wanted to jump on them when, when they were there. And you point out in your article, Rivera believes – now that the turnaround for the Redskins can be a little quicker than previously thought, right? Yeah, yeah, it kind of just popped out. I had to go back and you know look at that quote again and then re-listen to it just to make sure I wasn't missing it. But, yeah, yeah, he has been somewhat optimistic through all of this anyway. I don't know if that's just his personality or if he does really believe that there is some good talent. I, everything he has ever said, he likes the young core guys from the last three drafts. That was part of the reason that he was interested in giving Kyle a chance to, to maybe run the organization, the front office anyway. Uh, you know, it was because he he, he liked – when you go down through that list, obviously there's the first-round picks and the defensive line, but there's, there's guys spr- sprinkled throughout that I think that they're pretty good, guys, you know, and younger guys in the secondary, some of the young receivers, some of that, you know, some of the, I think, even young offensive linemen they're intrigued by. And I think uh, with the veterans they've added, I, I think he feels like they could at least be very competitive early on. Now, what is that? if that turns into victories, I don't know. But I think they could be competitive. They could have a very good defense. And if you're at least good on one side of the ball, then that gives you a chance to, to at least win some games in this league. Joined yeah. by Les Carpenter from the Washington Post, at Les Carpenter on Twitter. And I'm checking your tweet from 19 hours ago about – Chase Young visiting Jonathan Allen at his house on Friday after being drafted. That, that's a good move from a young guy to go visit a team leader, you know, defer to a guy like Allen. You know, he, he's not coming in with this, I was the second pick in the draft, big head. He's willing to defer to some of the leaders on this Redskins team. I think that's a good sign. I was very impressed by him yesterday in this little Zoom press conference he had with us because it was the first time he – he wasn't rushed in a you know in a phone call right after the draft or you know the combine where it's you know it's just a cattle call press conference. This is one where it was just him just talking to a few guys and you know women on the phone, and it was very interesting to sort of see how he kind of processed things and thought about things. And he had a very very mature approach. That was the thing I kept thinking about is wow this guy really he's got his feet on the ground. He understands exactly what he's getting into here. Uh, he knows what the expectations will be. He's prepared for that. Uh, yeah, I thought the fact that his first thing on the day after you know, the second pick of the draft was to get in the car and drive over to Jonathan Allen's house and just talk to the guy who probably is, at least for the defensive lineman, kind of their leader. And so, yeah, I, it's very, very mature approach by him. And, you know, I, I would think that's a good sign. Hopefully he stayed six feet away. Uh, <laughs> right. I'm sure he did. <laughs> 
Les, um, J- J.P. Finley, I want to give him credit for this because he pointed this out f- for me. Uh, he put it on, on social media, our, our buddy over at NBC Sports Washington, that the Trent Williams trade indicated clearly that Rivera is in charge because uh, Dan and Bruce never uh, would deal with a Shanahan you know, in the previous regime or in previous years, right? Uh, they felt burned by the Shanahan's. They would never want to do business with him. Uh, but with Rivera cementing this deal, that showed clearly that Rivera's in charge. You, you buy into that? Well, I buy into that, yeah. But, again, you know, Bruce isn't here, so there isn't any of that history. <clears throat> One of the things that I, I barely mentioned this in the story that you were talking about, about Rivera and Smith that I wrote the other day, but – yeah, a thought that really kept striking me over the weekend was, what's the name, what's the one name we're not hearing here through this draft? I mean, how many how many drafts are always been dominated in some way or other by Dan Snyder's name, and he just hasn't. He was almost invisible. He he, he did make the congratulatory phone call to to Chase Young, uh, but but he did that several minutes after Ron Rivera had already hung up with him. It wasn't like he just you know he's now obviously he's not physically in the same building as Rivera, but it, it was. It was clear that he, when he said, I'm taking that step back, so far he has taken that step back. And so, yeah, it's, I think you've got, first, the Bruce Allen isn't here. You don't have the history at the Shanahan's. You don't have all that. Secondly, yeah, you've got, you've got an owner who, for now, has said, you know, okay, I, I hired this guy, Ron Rivera. He's my guy. He can go do everything and just, you know, I'll check in and see how everything's going every day, which seems to be the way things are operating right now. You know, Les, getting back to your point about the defense, um, you know, I think they're going to be good too. Now, again, this is all on paper, but, you know, they've got more veterans on that defense than the offense has. I think the concern for a lot of Redskins fans, we've talked about this, is that, you know, you've got a, a young quarterback who didn't play much last year. You've got some young receivers. You added more young receivers in the draft, and they're not going to have a ton of time to work with each other. So I think the defense is, especially early in the season, whenever that starts, um, is really going to have to help the offense out and maybe keep the scores down because I just can't see this offense, even with you know a new play caller and new coaches, rolling up a ton of points because they're just not going to have a ton of time for reps. So uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I agree completely, and I don't think you did. I, I think you can extend saying just the start of the year. I think that would be something that they might do the whole year is this is going to be a defense first team. Let the offense develop slowly. Let, let Dwayne Haskins learn this new system. Let him, you know, work with these, these young guys that are coming in, let them develop together. And you've still got to figure out who's going to play left tackle, which is an important <laughs> question too. There's no tight ends really yet. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that have to kind of fit into place on the offense. And if you notice, they've, often, they've collected an awful lot of running backs, which, again, would speak to the fact that this is going to be a little bit more of a ball control approach. And, you know, as I was saying earlier, I think in the NFL, it's imperative to be really, really good on one side of the ball, at least. Very few teams are really good on either side, but you at least have to have something that you are. And I, in the last few years, I don't think the Redskins, have, you could say, well, they're not really very good defense, not very good on offense. I mean, there's – at least there's the potential to say that you're good on defense. And even to take that a step further, it's the, you know, the defensive line is so deep and strong right now uh, that you can say, hey, we're going to be really good up front. And if by being so good up front, that should make the rest of the defense a little bit better. And so I, I think, yeah, they're absolutely going with a defense-first approach. But you've got a defense-first coach and you've got a – Obviously, uh, an aggressive defensive coordinator, too. So I think that should play into what they, they want to do. Hey, Les, real quick. Is this team, I don't know if you've asked any of the coaches, is this team expecting Reuben Foster to play? It's a really good question. I, I just think right now you can't until you know what you get him on the field and, and see. I you know that, reco- that injury, it just was so bad. And I, you know, I think we didn't really get a lot of updates on it throughout the year, so I don't think we knew just how bad it was. But I had been told at the very beginning that there was p- potential nerve damage, and then it kind of went quiet, and no one really talked about that again. But as you see, that that was an issue, and and then yeah, I don't think you can count on them right now, and then just you know hope to see what happens.